copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Montgomery police calling all cars, venting all cars broadcast 216 regarding a dead body. Cooperate with fire department investigators in determining the identity of a body found in a burned building at 1757 East 112th Street. That's all. Sold and closed. hear a radio announcement selling gasoline that did not claim the generalities of faster starting, greater pickup, more power, smoother driving, and all the rest of the superlatives? Is that enough to deserve your loyalty and patronage? Have any authorities on gasoline endorsed the brand you're using? Or is there any proof that it is the outstanding buy in gasoline? Yes, we have made those same claims for Rio Grande Crack. But remember, we have always gone a step further by presenting true and conclusive proof with facts. You know, for we have told you so many times, that more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment are powered by Rio Grande Crack wherever it is sold than any other brand. But do you know that now your state of California has selected Rio Grande Crack gasoline to power its motor equipment? And now your federal government has specified Rio Grande Crack wherever it is obtainable to give you, the taxpayers, the benefit of the finest, most economical gasoline that your money can buy. Rio Grande thanks sincerely the thousands of new patrons who have made 1937 the greatest year in Rio Grande's history. If you are not a steady user of Rio Grande Crack, may it be our pleasure to invite you to join the hosts of motorists, the cities and counties, the state of California, and the United States government all of whom have made Rio Grande Crack gasoline first in public service. We are appreciative of the cooperation of law enforcement agencies in the presentation of this program, and have therefore asked Deputy Chief H.S. Figger of the Los Angeles Police Department to open our program. Chief Figger. Good evening. I've often been asked why police investigators were so eager to find a motive for a crime when the establishment of the motive was not always necessary in the prosecution of the case. The establishment of a motive for a crime sometimes makes the work of solving that crime much less difficult than it would otherwise be the case. In the story we are here to hear tonight, there was no apparent motive for a crime. And as a matter of fact, only the trained eyes of the fire department investigators were able to determine that a crime had been committed. Nevertheless, in this case, as in any crime, the perpetrator soon found that his crime did not pay. It's been a real pleasure, children, to have this opportunity to meet with you and worship with you today. I'm going to ask you all to stand and sing my wife's favorite hymn, Swing Low, Sweet Cat. Swing Low, Sweet Cat. Come and call to die in the
I can understand now why Sister Lewis liked that song so much. Well, it's been a glorious day being here with you. And I want you all to go forth with shining faces and hearts lifted to the Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. That was a mighty fine message, Brother Lewis. I don't know when I enjoy the meeting so much. Thank you, Sister Ruby, thank you. That was a mighty fine thing you said about adultery, Brother Lewis. That's just the way I feel about it, Brother Nelson. We need more preachers like you in the church today, Brother Lewis. I do the best to know how, according to my life. Goodbye, you all. Come back next Sunday. Powerful warm weather we've had for December. Yes, it is, Logan. How much was in the collection? Just a little over six dollars. Not very much. Well, you know, times is hard and folks can't give to the Lord like they used to. Never seemed to me like folks cared much whether they give to the Lord or not. Maybe that's why some of them's having so much trouble. Yeah, but you're faithful tall in the vineyard, though, Winnie. <laughs> I tried to do what I think the master would do if he was here. A Christian wife like you is a great comfort to a man. <laughs> I hope so, Logan. I tried to be a good wife. And yeah, uh, no man never had a better wife. Thank you, Logan. <laughs> well, you better be getting along. I got to be up at home. That won't give you much sleep, will it? <laughs> no, not very much. <laughs> I hope we don't have problems tonight again. That reminds me. So what you do with the, that letter you got Friday? I left it in my other purse. At home. I wonder who could have sent a threatening letter like that. The only one I can think is that gal Buddy used to go with. Or maybe her folks. Maybe. But the letter said you would put the police on them. And they're going to get you and me too. You ain't turned nobody into the police. I know it. And I just can't imagine who'd send me a letter like that. I can't figure out who'd want to do any harm to you or me. Well, ain't going to do no good to worry about it. No. Let's go on home. It's a long drive from San Pedro to Los Angeles. <laughs> Captain, I want to get you to broadcast for my wife. What's wrong with her? She's gone. How long has she been gone? Since this morning. Well, we can't broadcast for her, but we'll make out a missing person report on her. Well, why can't you broadcast for her? We have to wait 24 hours when the missing person is an adult. Uh, yes, sir. I see. Now, if you'll give me a description of her, I'll have my men keep on the lookout for her. Uh, when did she leave home? Well, uh, her cousin said he saw her about 9 o'clock this morning. She got on a streetcar close to our house. Yes. Yeah. And he says she got off at 12th and Central. And she hasn't been seen since. Well, that doesn't mean anything's happened to her. She's probably gone to a show or something. Oh, no, sir. She wouldn't do that. Why, she never goes to shows or anything like that. Besides, that letter said... That what letter? Well, she found a letter in the mailbox on Friday that, that said somebody was going to get her and me too. Well, don't worry about it. If he doesn't show up tonight, we'll get out a broadcast on it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Captain. But Winnie Lewis didn't come home that night, nor the next night. Then the hour of midnight crept nearer on the third night of her disappearance. Engine Company 65, Bame speaking. You've got a fire at 1757 East 112th Street. 1757 East 112th Street, okay. 1757 East 112th Street. Okay. Cab Bam. Looks like you had a worker. Yeah, pretty well gone when we got here. Keep Winkler in the corner in that corner? Yes, we found a body in the place. There's a couple of cops here and some of the boys from the detective bureau. Hey, maybe I'd better get in on this. Uh, pretty badly burned, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be kind of hard to identify her. Hello, Chief. Oh, hello, Nichols. You know Con Daffer, don't you? Oh, yeah. How are you, Frank? Oh, kicking around. Our investigators always follow through on a case where there's a death involved. Nichols will work with you fellows if you don't mind. Surely. I don't think there'll be much to do, though. Not much of a case here. Possibly a murder. 
What do you mean? That woman was here before the fire started. How do you figure? The body's on its back. The arms aren't contracted. The legs are extended. Those aren't characteristic poses of a burned body if the person was alive when the fire started. I'm afraid you're right, Mitchell. There's a hole in the forehead and one in the temple. Oh, maybe a beam fell on it. Well, in that case, the charred wood would have been embedded. Mm, uh, here's a purse we found underneath the body. <laughs> See what's in it. Pencil stub, a nail file, a couple of handkerchiefs. And there's a box of aspirin. We'll probably need that. Yeah. Uh-oh, here's a notebook. Let's see what it might have. There's a name and address. This is Winnie Lewis, 1333 39th Street, Axe 7400. And there's the telephone of the egg lady. Maybe shoes, number six. Oh, huh. looks like 1333 39th Street's a good place to find out who this is. Hey, wait a minute. I got a notation on that name, Lewis. Where the heck's my notebook? Here, a missing person, Monday, December 5th, Winnie Lewis. Want to take a run out to this address with me? No, that's sort of doubling up on things. You go on out there. I'll see what I can find here. Okay, check with you later. You better take Clay and her Hammond with you. Leaving the police to follow their own lines of investigation, the arson squad investigators, Nichols and Whalen, proceed to run down clues to the crime. There doesn't seem to be anybody at home. Knock on the door. Maybe the bell's not working. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Whalen? Can't you hear that bell? Oh, y'all looking for Brother Lewis? As a matter of fact, we're looking for Winnie Lewis. Uh, she ain't there. Well, we just about figured that out. Uh, yes, sir. I'm Harry Nelson. I live over there. Next door to the Lewis's, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, are y'all policemen? Arson squad investigator. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, well, Mrs. Lewis, she went off on Monday. She ain't been back. Is uh, Brother Lewis her husband? Yes, sir. Where is he? Oh, uh, he works down in the Hall of Justice for the sheriff. Do you have any idea where this Lewis woman might be? No, sir. I ain't seen her say she got that threatening letter. What kind of threatening letter? Uh, she found a letter in a mailbox right there last Friday morning. Uh, she was awful upset about it, too. Uh, what did it say? Did you see it? Uh, yes, sir. I saw it. It says, your wife put the police on us. We're going to get her and you, too. They had people peeking in that windows lately, too. Yeah, then Mrs. Lewis might simply have gone off to stay with friends till this blows over. Is that it? Uh, yes, sir. She might. But I don't think so. What makes you think that? Uh, I don't know. I expect y'all better go over and talk to Brother Clump. He knows this Lewis better than I do. Where's he? Uh, on uh, 113th Street. 1674, I think it is. Well, we'll try that anyway. Uh, thanks, Mr. Nelson. You've been very helpful. Oh, that's all right. Sister Winnie was a good woman. What the did he mean? Was. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like the beginning of a long, hard winter. Hey, good evening. We're looking for a Mr. Klopp. Ah, Mr. Klopp, uh, what can I do for you gentlemen? Do you know a Mrs. Winnie Lewis? Mm, very well. Won't you gentlemen come in? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Klopp, uh, may I ask your occupation, uh, that is, what you do? Well, I'm a minister of the gospel. I have a little church at 1757 East 120th Street. 1757, did you say? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Why? Did you know there was a fire over there at about 11.30? Oh, most of me, no. Oh, was it the church? No, just a little shack back of the church. Thank the Lord. We just built our little church. We used to hold services in the little building on the back of the lot. Was that shack locked up, Mr. Clark? Why, I'm sure it was. However, the key's always lying on the side of the altar in the church. Besides, any pass key would unlock the door. We found the back door of the church open tonight. No, it shouldn't have been. I locked it myself. Has anyone you know access to the church or to the small building? No, except that almost any skeleton key will unlock the set. Just what do you know about Mrs. Winnie Lewis, Mr. Cox? Oh, she's one of the finest souls I ever met. A splendid Christian woman. And an ardent church worker, too. When did you see her last? Why, let's see. I saw Sister Lewis last Sunday down at San Pedro. I visited Brother Lewis's services down there. And I helped Sister Lewis with the collection. How much did she get? Oh, five or six dollars. All in silver and pennies. Uh, do you know anything about her disappearance from her home or what she was wearing? Well, only what I've been told. I understand she left home by nine o'clock Monday morning. And she was wearing a black hat and a black and white check coat and... Just give him, give him dress. Mm. 
Uh, where did you get this information? Uh, from her husband, uh, Logan Lewis. Uh, he told me his wife had disappeared. And we made arrangements for a class news to broadcast her on his program, on the radio. Uh, do you know if she's been seen since then? Mm, no, sir, I don't. Uh, do you recognize this notebook, uh, Mr. Klopp? Mm, why, certainly. That's just the winner's notebook. I've seen it a lot of times. Well, this notebook was taken from the purse of a woman whose body was found in the shack back of your church. Some additional information secured from the pastor of the church, the investigators began a round of questioning of relatives of the missing woman. Gathered in the home of Logan Lewis, they narrowed their investigation to the immediate relatives of Winnie Lewis. Now, uh, as I get it, uh, you're Harry Maines, uh, Mrs. Lewis's cousin. That's right. And uh, you're Mabel Blanche, her sister? Yes. Of course, Logan, we know what your relationship is. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, now, Harry, when did you see Mrs. Lewis last? Oh, I saw her about 9 o'clock Monday morning. Where? Well, we got on the streetcar at uh, 29th and Ascot. Did you go uh, all the way to town? Well, I did, but she got off at 12th and Central. Did she say what for? Well, she said she was going to see the dentist. Does she uh, have a dentist in that neighborhood, Lewis? Yes, sir. Uh, Mabel... Uh, when did you see Mrs. Lewis last? When she left the house about 8.30. She told me that there was $3 in the candy dish and for me to give it to the insurance man if he come. Uh, do you know of any hard feeling in this family? Oh, no, sir, none at all. Her and Logan got along fine. Any idea how much money she had with her when she left? Well, she said she had about $3 besides the insurance money she left. Did you see this uh, threatening letter she supposed to have received? Yes, sir. I saw it the day she got it. Logan come running into the house one morning after he got home from work and showed it to her. Uh, where is that letter now? Uh, my wife had in the purse when she left. I see. Uh, when did you see her last, Logan? Oh, about 4.30 when I left for work Monday. I see. Uh, did you tell Klopp what kind of clothes she had on when she disappeared? Uh, yes, sir. I told him she had on a black and white checkered coat and a pink gingham dress and a black hat. Did your wife uh, ever have any trouble with anybody, Logan? Well, her brother got in a jam with some people once, and she had a lot of argument with him. And they said they fixed her brother so one white shirt be all he needs. Hmm. Did they ever uh, threaten your wife? I don't know. But maybe they's the one that sent that letter last week. Uh, did your wife have any insurance? Why, yes, I think she did. Uh, some of the Golden State, I think. Well... I'll look into this case a little. I'll let you hear from me later. Oh, well, I'll be here. Or oh, you can find me at the Hall of Records where I work. Beginning to form definite theories about the case, the arson squad investigators, Nichols and Whalen, check with Lieutenant Condaffer as to his findings on the case. Condaffer, I wish you'd pick Logan Lewis and bring him down here. We want to ask him some questions away from the family. Okay. Oh, by the way, here's the Stilson wrench you found out in the burned building. Mm. Look, Nichols, that's burned cloth clinging to that wrench. Yeah, it looks like it. And here's a piece of hat we found out there. Piece of fur. Looks like it might be a piece of fur collar from the woman's coat. They had a test run on it yet? Yes. Pinker says there's blood on the hat and on the fur. Did you find this stuff near the body? No, it was in another part of the shack. Then she was murdered before she was put in that building. Yeah, it looks that way. Homicide? Turn up her speaking. Of course, you don't know me, but I know something about that Willie, Willie Lewis kid. Good. Do you want to come down here and tell us about it? Sure, I'll be down there in half an hour. Uh, that was a guy who has some dope in this case. Ryan and I will pick up Lewis. You fellas wait here for this new man. We'll try to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Sit down, Lewis. You know fire department investigators Nichols and Whalen, I believe? Yes, sir. Uh, Logan, we want to ask you a few questions. Okay, go ahead. Want uh, Coombs in here? Yeah, better have him. Uh, now, Logan, uh, you told us your wife had on a pink gingham dress when she disappeared, didn't you? Yes, sir. How do you know? I saw with it all. Monday? Yes, sir, Monday. You told us out at your house that you went to work at 4.30 Monday morning. Is that right? Yes, sir. Where was your wife when you left? She was still in bed. She had a headache. Was she wearing the gingham dress while she was still in bed? Well, you see, it was. Well, I... 
Coombs, the ghost. Hello, Brother Lewis. Uh, howdy, Brother Coombs. You know this man? Sure, I do. When did you see him last? Monday morning, about 9.30. Out on Compton, close to Nadu Street. Was he alone? No, no. so such a way he was with him. Is this true, Lewis? Well, I... Well, sure it's true. I had Ruth Jones with me in my truck. We saw Brother and Sister Lewis driving out of Compton. And I said to you, there goes Brother Lewis and Sister Lewis. Then that night we went to a play down at the church. And I heard that Sister Wayne has been missing all day. So I said, you're crazy. Why, I saw her and Brother Lewis this morning. Now, do you know this man Lewis very well, Mr. Coon? Oh, sure do. It goes to his church. Why, just a couple of months ago, I lent him my Stilson to fix some pipes out at the church. You lent him a Stilson wrench two months ago? Sure. Did he return it? Not yet. Take a, take a look at that wrench on the table over there. Uh, don't touch it. Is that the one? Yep, that's the same wrench. Thank you, Mr. Coons. You've been very helpful. Well, uh, any time I can do anything, let me know. Goodbye, Brother Lewis. Oh, oh, oh goodbye, Brother Coons. Seem pretty interested in that newspaper, Lewis. Yes, sir. I like to read. Kind of, uh, did you search uh, Lewis's clothes? Yeah, here's the stuff in this envelope. Uh, $3 in silver. $40 in bills. Hey, here's a card. I checked on the address on that card. Hmm. Brian is out looking for a girl, the one whose name's on the card. Hmm, the woman in the case, huh? Looks that way. Brian ought to be back any minute. Uh, Logan, uh, do you think you can put that paper down long enough to answer some questions? Hmm? Uh, oh, so, Mr. Nichols. Uh, whose, uh, whose phone number is this on this card? Let me see. Oh, that. Well, I don't exactly remember where I did get that card. It's the address of a dance band. Are you in the habit of frequenting such places? Oh, no, sir. I ain't never been to no place like that. Here's that girl, Tom Baffer. Her name is Billy Jones. Oh, come in, Miss Jones. Uh, do you know this man? Sure. He's Logan Lewis. I've been out with him lots of times. How are you, Sugar? Hi. Right. What's the matter, Sugar? Ain't you glad to see me? Oh, sure, sure. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> you look like it. You say uh, you've been out with this man? Sure, lots of times. Uh, did you did you write this on this card? Uh, Please don't, Billy. Yeah, I wrote it. Uh, what does it mean? It means uh, don't call me after nine o'clock. Uh, is any is anybody supposed to get that from these two words on here? Well, Logan knows what it meant. I told him when I gave him the card. Where was that? In the dance hall where I worked. When was the last time you were with Lewis? I ain't been out with him for now until a month. I saw him Wednesday morning, though, when he was buying a new rug for his car. Yep, that rug, Wayland. And how it caused right outside. Uh, Billy, uh, did you know this man was married? Sure, but he said his wife was sick. Said she wasn't going to live long, didn't she, Logan? Uh, you'll have to excuse Logan. He's busy reading the funnies. Uh, did he say how he knew his wife wasn't going to live long? No, sir. He never said. Uh, Billy, take a look at that wrench on the table over there. Uh, did you ever see that before? I don't know. Uh, I saw one about that size in Logan's car once. Thanks, Billy. That'll be all. We'll call you if we need you. What's the matter, Logan? Lost interest in the paper? No. Why don't you go on reading? Hey, nothing to read. Lewis, did you kill your wife? No. Why did you kill her? Uh, I was... I never killed oh, her. Oh, yes, you did. Did you kill her before you went to the church or after? I tell you, I never killed her. Well, I got that rug. It's new one, but there are stains that look like blood in the cracks of the floorboard. Picker's running a test on them, and he's going to phone us when he's sure. How about that, Lewis? I don't know nothing about it. It won't do you any good to lie about it, Lewis. Why did you kill her? I didn't... Uh, you... You've been lying from the start, Lewis. Come clean now. I didn't have you nothing in the car. I didn't. Who saw you do it? Uh, nobody. Then you did it. No, no, I didn't. Why'd you burn the body? I wanted to. I, I didn't burn Lewis, it. Do you believe in a hereafter? Yes. Do you believe in a heaven and a hell? Yes. Do you believe your wife's in heaven? Yes. And you know you'll never go there because you killed her, don't you? No, I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. I tell you, I didn't. Homicide. Hung up it. Yes. Yes. Okay, Tinker. Thanks. Tinker says the scraping from the floorboard show human blood. Well, Lewis. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll talk. I killed her. I needed money. She had insurance. I wanted to buy a thing for Billy. I killed her. I did it. I did it. I did it. Brethren, we gathered together this morning to lift our hearts 
thoughts and worship. We are grateful to the warden of this prison for allowing us to form our own little congregation. Amen. And we're also grateful to the warden for being our guest this morning. And as a special gesture, we'd like to sing your favorite hymn, warden. Well, Lois, my favorite is one of your own spirituals. Swing those we carry. Well, warden, we'll sing it for you. Brethren, let's sing. Swing those we carry. going to spend over $100 this year on gasoline if you are an average motorist. Some of you will spend over $200. Why not be guided by the United States government, the state of California, and the many, many cities and counties who specify Rio Grande cracked gasoline to power their automotive equipment? Visit the nearest red and white Rio Grande station. Take aboard a tank full of Rio Grande cracked, and learn for yourself what it is that is brought to this truly finer gasoline the most um, eminently deserved and the most ended recommendations ever accorded any gasoline. The great multitude of local, state, and national authorities who swear allegiance to this matchless gasoline can't be wrong. You will learn just how right they are tomorrow morning when you wheel into Rio Grande's red and white station in your neighborhood and drive out with your tank filled with Rio Grande cracks. The gasoline that will give your car the same emergency performance that is one enthusiastic acceptance wherever sold. And now, Deputy Chief Seager. Logan Lewis, who was condemned by his own people, was, with their help, found guilty in Superior Court and sentenced to life imprisonment. He thought he had committed a perfect crime, but he failed to collect. His crime did not pay. Thank you, Chief Seeger. Police calling all cars, attention all cars. Cancellation broadcast 216 regarding a dead body. Suspect in this case is now in custody. And that's all. Rolls and clips. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.